using the switch and case statements. Let's take a look at how this works. We'll make a working copy of working.c, and I'm just going to paste it here into the working project and double click on it and open it up there. And we're going to put in a switch statement here. We're going to have to do a little other typing, so bear with me for a moment. Switch statement works like this. If I have a variable, like in this case, I'll make an integer and I will call it foo and give it a value of three. Then I can have a switch statement like this, switch foo and give it an empty block. And now depending on the value of foo, I can have it do a number of different things. So I can say case one and have it do puts one. And I need a break explain that in a minute. And if I type case two, you notice that Eclipse is really nice about formatting this. Puts two. And a break. Let's just go ahead and copy and paste this a couple more times. So if the value is two, it'll come down here, it'll puts two. If the value is three, which it is, it will branch to this case three and run everything from there to the break. So if I run this, you see that it prints three. If I were to take out this break, it would print both three and four. This happens sometimes in Eclipse. You can just click run in the background and there you go. So it prints three and four. And you notice we get a little warning here. It says no break at end of case because that's usually a bug because usually you want to have a break in there so that it just does that one conditional. So this is what's called a multi-way conditional or a multi-way switch. One thing you need to be aware of is these case clauses cannot have a variable. It has to be a constant. So if I had a variable up here, int two value equals two, and if I tried to say case two value, then when I try to compile it and run it, I just pressed save and I'll run it here. You see, I get an error and the error says case label does not reduce to an integer constant. So that has to be an integer constant. So I'll put a two back there and save and run it and it works just fine. So normally what you end up doing, especially in C, is you end up creating a list of constants. And in C, a constant looks like this, pound define, one, one, like that. And because this is a preprocessor directive and it's not actually compiled, it's run through the preprocessor, and it's actually a macro, and we'll learn more about this in the chapter on the preprocessor. Because of that, you do not put a semicolon at the end. A semicolon here would be a syntax error. So let's just create a few of these. And now in place of these one, two, three, four, I can say one and two. So you want to use constants here if you can. Just makes it easier to maintain your code. Now you can change all this in one place rather than having to look for all the places where you need to change it. So I'll save that and run it and you see that it works just fine. Now there's also a disadvantage to using these defines for constants. Unfortunately in C that's all you've got. In C++, you can actually use real integer constants because these aren't processed by the compiler at all. These are processed by the preprocessor, and they're actually macros. They're subject to side effects, and they don't get into the symbol table. And so for a lot of purposes, that's all you got, so you use it, but it's not the best way to do it. For best programming practice, you want to use integer constants, which only works in C++. So we're going to go ahead and rename this file. And I'm just going to put PP on the end of it. And that makes it working.cpp instead of working.c. And now it'll compile with the C++ compiler instead of the C compiler. I'm going to go ahead and clean the project to make sure that this works on all the platforms. And I'm going to bring that up in my editor. And now instead of this define one like that, I'm going to say const int i1 equals one like that. And I'm just going to make four of those. And I'm just going to paste these in down here. Now, again, this does not work in C. It only works in C++, but it does work beautifully in C++. Now, these are integer constants. They're immutable. You cannot change them. They're actually constants. So I can't come down here and say I1 equals 42. I'll get a syntax error if I try to compile and run that. And there it is. See that little error there? It says... Assignment of read-only variable, I1. Cannot do that. But for the purposes of the switch statement, for all of these case clauses, it does work fine. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this, and we see that it does exactly what we expect. I'm going to change this value to a 4, 
And again, we're getting this here. You can just switch this, always run the background and never see this, but I leave it running. And there we have four. Now, if I change this to another value like five, we don't have a case for five. So if I run that, you'll notice we get nothing. And for that purpose, the switch statement has a default clause. And so save that and run it, and now we get default. So any number we put up here, 42, run that, and it says default. Zoom this in a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So that's how switch works. The multi-way switch control can be very handy in cases where you need to select a condition from a list of possibilities. The case statement needs a constant. So you'll need to take special care to use the proper type of constant for this purpose. Now let's go ahead and bring this back and we'll delete 